welcome to sustainable innovation youtube channel where we've been talking about sustainable farming practice sustainable energy efficiency and water conservation today we are going to talk about integrated farming methods and these farming methods are sustainable farming methods in horticulture we'll be taking you to homo bay county right in north sub county wang cheng ward where we'll be meeting one of our farmers who is doing integrated farming and really focusing on climate change issues i'm your host Anne okello please feel welcome and don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more information on sustainable farming practices which are helping us fight climate change welcome hi engineer samon was a trained professional engineer working with the two major companies samia africa as engineering manager for a period over 25 years then worked with the sprintex engineering company as technical director that one i worked for three years when working with the sprintex i traverse a lot in central province and the upper eastern when i was maintaining the farm machines during that period, I developed a passion for farming. Then I decided to take early retirement and return to my rural area to start farming. I've done pilot farming since 2019. I've done it now for the last two years. And what I've learned, there is a lot in farming. What I also appeal to the young people that farming is really good. If young people can embrace it, and also my person, if I can change the life of one or two people, it will be very good. And if they embrace farming, farming is good for health and wealth. When you do farming, you get fresh produce from the farm, which is good for your health. And those fresh produce also brings money, which is wealth. As we do farming, it helps a lot in the surrounding and especially how we take care of the environment. We change the environment a lot when we are doing farming with the trees around, with the passion fruits around, which help as windbreakers and also as manure. When we'll do the groundnuts, groundnut itself will try to do value addition such that we can have peanut butter, we can have groundnut, groundnut husk, which is also help the surrounding environment. I've done a few areas of different plants. I've done some medicinal plants which have a lot of medicinal value, like uh, tree tomato, the apple tree also I'm trying in here, and also the other tree like this one which people say, which has a lot of medicinal value for cancer and arthritis. We have done the popo, also have a lot of medicinal value. If you can Google, you get what popo will do to the body when you eat it. So, so far, we are doing a drip irrigation system to the plants. So we usually do this throughout the year. So whether the, we are in the dry season or rainy season, our plants are continuing throughout the year because of the drip irrigation system. Within the drip irrigation have met challenges, especially the drip lines, they usually get clogged. So we have moved it to the button types, which you can open up and service online as you use it. So the major challenge I'm still having is mainly how to do the integrated pest management and how to improve on organic farming and also how to do the 
do irrigation in all the areas within the plot. The other challenge we are having is mainly how to do value addition to our products, especially when we are doing peanut, when doing groundnuts, when we are doing popo, we can take it to popo jam, and when we are doing other crops, how to do value addition. The other challenge is majorly the markets. How do we reach the right market? The local people buy it at their price, not at your price. Because if you don't sell, the fruit will rot. But once we do value addition, we'll sell it at our price. Because I can have the, the commodity for longer life. So that once somebody needs it, we'll take it at our price. But for the fruit, they, we, they take at their price. So that is the major challenge we are facing, such that if we can change the young generation and do value addition, then at least we can change the community to better environment, food security, and health, health and wealth. So this one is uh, giant passion fruits. We are doing trial in the lake regions. So I've seen it doing very well, and uh, the fruit itself is very sweet. So far I have uh, many varieties. I have the giant passion fruits, I have the sweet yellow round, the sweet yellow oval. Yeah, this one is the oval sweet yellow. So this one is uh, as it matured, you can see the color is turning yellowish. I have the round bitter yellow. This one is very good for blending when we are making passion juice. I have the, the purple and also the hard shell. So this hard shell variety, the skin is very strong. Even breaking it is not all that easy. So this one stops children from getting it and also from uh, hands from uh, attacking the fruit. But for a mature person, you can get it out. Each and every individual have different taste. Each of one of them have different flavors. So with the flavor you will get, which one is sweet for you, so that that customer will take that type of variety. And also I was doing trial, which one does well in the lake region. So from there now, I can advise other people, this is the one which does well within the lake region. Hmm. The only challenges I'm facing is mainly water. Wherever they are affected by drought, the, they have, the growth does not go very well as, as, as if we are in the rainy season. Yeah. So that's the major challenge I are faced with the person fruits. What about the marketing? Do you have clients and how do you go about it? Marketing is still not uh, very much because fruit uh, plates in the rural area is not much valued eh, as, as people who are in town. But at the moment uh, I have one customer from Kisumu who does the collection of the person fruit. Both the sweet yellow and the purple. But the bitter yellow, many people do not like it, unless those who are making juices for blending. Okay. And how many months does it take for the passion fruit to grow? The so hybrid one, which I have the sweet yellow, takes about six months for it to grow and start flowering. The non-hybrid ones have taken nine months. Uh, when the passion fruit is ready, there are two ways of knowing. One. It changes in color from green to yellow. The other one, you touch the skins, and if it is done being soft, it shows that it's already matured. So bananas here, we have different varieties. Uh, the ones I have, I have the ground nine, ground nine, the salt and the long cabandis, the F17, the Uganda green and uh, Ngombe. So the one which is right now, this is the, the long cabandis.
They have different uses because the cavandis, the sugar content is high, so we use it majorly for ripening variety. But when we go to Ngombe F17 and Grand 9, the sugar content is a bit less, so we use it for, as a cooking variety. Uh, this one I've taken, uh, because most of them were tissue cultured, they have taken between 7 to 12 months. Yeah, we are getting the, these seedlings, we do replanting or other farmers around by, we give them so that at least each every household should have a banana. I'm spreading the message for every household to plant a banana by giving free seedlings. In banana we are faced, eh? we are mainly the preparation, how to prepare the hole for the banana. That is the first challenge. The second challenge is water. If it irrigated like me, I do irrigation, so the performance is very well. Then the third challenge is the diseases which we get in the bananas. The end rots, like this one, we don't have it, but uh, others are affected where we get the end rots within the banana, it's the banana fruit. Banana is a local fruit, so the market within the local area, we have market. This one is the ngombe, and uh, this one, at this stage, it have taken a data, it takes about four months for it to mature up. After flowering, then for the fruit to mature up for harvesting, it takes between three to four months. It's a cooking variety. This one has taken about 11 months, yeah. So this is another variety. This is the F-17. Yeah, the F-17. This one has taken 10 months. The Grand 9 variety. No, I'm not to say that we have done harvesting. Usually when we do harvesting in a banana, we have to remove the trunk and cover the area with soil so that it doesn't call for pest to go to the roots of the banana. The trunks of the banana is not affected with pests. So the roots which are mainly affected. So we dig it out, then cover that area with soil. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more information on sustainable farming practices which are helping us fight climate change.